Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now today guys, I have got a best of one game, it is a ladder game between the Red Zerg player, Targa, and in the top right we do have FXO's Baby Knight, who is the Blue Protoss. And well, the map is Daybreak, everyone's favourite, and well, being a ZVP we should have a good game in store for us. Now, a little bit of a giveaway is that this is a massively long game and I haven't actually cast a massively long game in quite a while so I'm all like yeah I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna cast a really really epic game and I don't actually know what happens for all I know someone could like completely they could both cheese each other both end up with like one worker apiece and then the game just goes on forever we will wait and see though hopefully that won't be the case otherwise this could be a bit of a waste of all of our times but I expect out of Baby Knight and Targa this to be a really really good game they're both really good Baby Knight obviously doing really well at the moment so yeah um, nice little bit of joking around there in the chat that Baby Knight's viewers should come and watch Targa instead because yeah streaming for the win now what can we expect from these two players? Well, obviously, Baby Knight has already thrown down that pylon. Now, that suggests I'm going to be forge fast expanding. May actually see a Nexus first out of Baby K because it's just a little, it's quite easy to take on Daybreak. The rush distance is quite a long way, so it is not too difficult. And then we've obviously got the approach from the Zerg, which is most likely going to be a 15 or 14 pull, so it's going to be 15 from Targa into quite a quick expansion, and then the third base will be taken at about 4 to 5 minutes, aiming ideally for roughly about 4 minutes 20, I'd say is the best point to go for that, but we'll wait and see how it all plays out. Obviously, Baby Knight will be attempting to block hatcheries with that probe, it's the most likely thing. Targa trying to there just pick off the probe if he can, because that would be a big win. It also means that Baby Knight's a bit blinder, so Baby Knight anyway has gone for that Nexus first. It's a good opening to go for, as I've already discussed. And obviously the Overlord looks like it's going to be coming back to the back position over here. That's somewhere I really do feel is the best place to send your first Overlord. It's all the way through and just put it at the back there, because then you can see the gas timings, which are really, really important. Now, the expansion did go down uncontested pretty much there by Targo. It was a 16 hatch, I do believe. And, well, we've got the queen in production now, and everything is going right to plan. So, judging from the looks of things, they're both gearing up to be a pretty macro game. Not much is going on. And in light of the fact that I know for a fact this is a really long game, I'm actually going to just put this on two times speed for a little while, just to try and see really what goes on because I'm expecting a lot of action later in this match. Now, do you see the two Zerglings there? The third base goes down just after four minutes, so quite an early third base there. Baby Knight's own base coming up. We've got the pylon wall off. Obviously, the gateway down. The two gas just finishing up. No gas yet for Targa, of course. They won't be coming down until really about 40 to 50 supply is the point at which Zerg tend to grab their first two gas. Now, obviously, the cybernetics core coming down as well here now. And, well, Everything is pretty much going to plan. We've got the probe coming down, but the queen is there, so that probe probably won't be able to get away with doing too much. It is worth watching what that probe does go to do, though, because obviously chucking down a pylon or something like that is always something you want to be a little bit careful of. Now, Targa actually getting his first two gas quite early here at b before 40 supply, which in this matchup really is quite an early point. So I'll be very interested to see what he does there. Meanwhile, Baby Knight getting down that robotics facility. No additional gateways. This screams to me that it's going to be a kind of two, three immortal sentry push, which is very good on Daybreak. Meanwhile, though, out of Targa, we do have the Roach Warren coming down as well as Zergling Speed. So perhaps giving up for some kind of Roach Ling push. Now, just speeding things back up again because while this all plays out, we won't see too much more. Now, actually, a Warp Prism coming down. So that is quite an unusual opening. Well, not unusual, but a bit more unusual than you can say of some other things. Meanwhile, this Stalker, just going to try and be irritating. I don't think there was any kills grabbed there. Two things picked off. I'm not quite sure what it was. It was a worker and probably a couple of Zerglings. Anyway, looking around here, we've got the Warp Prism is on the field. But where exactly has that gone, Mr. Warp Prism? Uh, War Prism. Oh, you're just saying right under my nose. I hate it when that happens. I, I always look like such an idiot. Just being like, the War Prism's disappeared. Where's it gone? Anyway, is that War Prism going to get spotted by the Zerglings? It very well could. And that would really put an end to everything. And it is going to get spotted there. So, Targa straight away knows what's going on. The Stalkers get dropped. They need to be careful dropping out of there because they are completely surrounded. One gets picked off for basically no losses at all there for Targa. Baby Knight really needs to be careful. Sees all the roaches coming along and can now be pretty certain of what is coming. I'm surprised this 
Wall Prism is still going, needs to get a, well, good defense here because there's a lot of units streaming across the map right now. Already a handful of Zerglings and the two Queens there. That Wall Prism drop is going to do very little because obviously just so much coming out. Some Spine Crawlers also being built, the Wall Prism getting focused. Meanwhile, the action at the natural base of Baby Knight. He's got one Immortal out, but there's quite a few units basically coming towards him and it will be forced back at the moment. That Immortal can just do so much damage to drop into the main has been pretty hard counted. If we look at the army supply, a lot of army has been invested by target there. It hasn't really done enough damage, in my opinion. If we look at the resources lost, he's actually lost more. He's done, well, no damage to the worker line. And obviously, Baby Knight has now got his two immortals up. He is going to lose a couple of pylons down here and does get supply blocked, but that's not a huge issue. The bigger issue is ultimately that the worker count for the Zerg is still behind that of the Protoss player. That causes a big issue going into the mid and late game because that early supply, um, the early income can really mean a lot. Now we've got the double Evo chamber on its way down at the moment. That's obviously going to be used for the double upgrades, which I think is a great move. The lair only just coming out now and we're at like 10 minutes 30. So that lair very, very late. Com well, not very late, but quite late compared to some timings you usually see. Obviously Blink on its way out for Baby Knight and Baby Knight really does have the tech advantage at the moment because the Zerg player here obviously just has Roach Ling, not really much to deal with. He does have a macro hatch down and also the fourth base on its way, but the work count is the important thing, and still we're only just seeing Targa pulling ahead now, but Baby Knight is really keeping up there. He's got his third base on the way, the double cannon, so it's going to be very nicely defended with the sentries and immortals. Roach Ling just won't be able to do the damage it needs to do to really stop Baby Knight doing whatever he wants. And a three base Protoss player is very, very dangerous. We've got additional walling off here just to make sure it is very, very safe. Obviously, all of this force has done nothing, so that's what you've got to think of it as. A big early commitment in terms of resources, which really hasn't achieved much, so all of this could have been drones, and by them not being drones, you invest in something else. Anyway, the 1-1 one -one upgrade's on the way out for Targa at the moment. He's also getting his infestation pit down. Obviously, the plus two Protoss ground weapons already done. Plus three not started yet, but I imagine it will be soon. Now, those four immortals and a lot of sentries will just demolish this army. The Warprism actually being used effectively just to keep vision of what's going on and there's nothing that Targa can do about that because he's got nothing that can attack it apart from those queens. Obviously the Infestor's Pathogen Glands upgrade is on its way. Aside from that, there's very little tech coming down. We are getting, obviously, the 1-1 one -one upgrades half done. We do have plus three Protoss ground weapons on the way for Baby Knight. The Roach Speed upgrade on its way. Three more gateways coming down here. And now this is really just to form a very defensive position from Zergling Rombys. Those cannons would be exceptionally difficult to take out with Zerglings alone. Mean Neither of these players really engaging there. Now, the thing I like Targa's doing now is he is up to about 84 workers, which means he's starting to build those spine crawler walls, which is precisely what you want to do because Obviously, the endgame strategy here is to go for Broodlord Infester, and that is complemented by a lot of spine callers for the static defense that you're essentially going to need to prevent the Protoss Death Ball just coming to kill you. And if it doesn't, if there is a big engagement, you can't get back quickly enough to defend it unless you have this large wall of spine callers to really just slow the Protoss player down slightly. Now, looking around here, we obviously we've got the Robotics Bay on its way, which means Colossus should be out shortly. More gateways still being added on because gateways are good units. A Photon Cannon just coming down here. And now, these are most likely just for a bit of drop defense and all things like Infestors, etc., which is a good move. That single Zeta getting taken down very, very quickly. Another Zeta coming to check for the fifth base. That's a good thing to do because while Target is only a base up at the moment, this is the sort of timing when I'd be looking to take a fifth, especially when there hasn't been any big engagements. Now, what I'll be interested to see is whether Baby and I will take out these center rocks because they could really allow for a quick resupply. The fourth base being taken by Baby and I, which means it will be on equal bases as opponent. The Observer just getting a look on everything. Hive tech coming down. Creep spread. A bit disappointing, if I'm honest. We're like at 14 minutes and the bases are only just joined up. There's not really much more than that. It's probably, looking at the fact that there's only one active creep tumor here, I think it's a good job by Baby Knight denying it with the Observer and some other stuff. But Baby Knight is definitely in a strong position. He's up to 73 workers to 85. The fifth base now just on its way out for Targa. He's getting some spore crawlers around. Definitely a wise move, if nothing else, just for the detection. Um, could do it some here because DTs could wreck this base currently. Um, looking around, we've obviously got some more spines and a spore crawler, and that is all looking good. Now, these infestors are going to pick off the war prison, but the stalkers are on their way in as well. Blink is done, but again, some good fungal growths could really be irritating for Baby Knight. 
but a good blink forward. Definitely worth blinking forward there to pick off a single investor because an investor for no losses is a very, very good trade. Looking at the upgrades, 2-2 two, two on the way out, the melee upgrades for target at the moment. That's compared to 3-0, the plus one shield upgrade coming down for Baby Knight at the moment. The Colossus on their way out. Hive tech is done, but interestingly, nothing being done with the Hive tech, which I would really put down to just being a bit of a mistake. There's no Spire, so we can't have any Broodlords out yet. In which case, I'd probably just throw down the Ultralisk Cavern, not because there is really that great, but what's the point of teching up to Hive just to get Adrenal Glands? There isn't, I mean, his 2-2 upgrades aren't done yet. There goes down the Ultralisk Cavern. Ultras aren't terrible anymore, because if you fungal growth and allow the Ultras a good engagement angle, they can actually deal big damage, and actually, Zerglings with Adrenal Glands and 3-3 upgrades do an like incredible amount of damage, and really just acquire a reasonable a small even number of zerglings running into one of these bases could do huge damage at 3-3 three, three. so we'll wait and see how that works out obviously you do have this zealot coming in unfortunately getting there before this mass spine wall is finished but the single zealot unfortunately won't be able to kill the base before everything dies but this has forced a lot of the army back now while this spine wall is great there's an awful lot of infestors in tiger's army and well we've got a bit of engagement here some good force fields preventing any of the zerg force getting over here these well, Colossus and the Immortal Stalker army just wrecking all the spine crawlers, dealing huge damage. But here come the reinforcements. The fungal growths are great at the moment. And well, the Corruptors, the Colossi, don't have any Corruptors to really worry about, which means this Roach army getting so decimated. And now it's just a case of throwing down some infested Terrans. But Baby, Baby Knight has got momentum right now. He's probably going to lose one of those Colossus, but manages to micro it back with just 9 HP. That is absolutely brilliant, but this push doesn't have enough momentum to finish the rest of those spine crawlers. Now, if we look at the loss tab, that actually came out far worse for Baby Knight, which isn't something I would have predicted, but a remax here for, of Targa with 10 Ultralisks. That is absolutely insane. That's how you spend all of your bank. The 3-3, three, three, oh, actually the plus 3 melee attack, as well as the Ultra Armor upgrade on the way down. Fleet Beacon for Baby Knight, so we should see a Mothership shortly. And, well, so far this is a really, really tough spot to be in because Baby Knight, while he does have those Colossus, they are not going to be that strong against the Ultralisks. But some good fun growth will allow the Ultras to get in range of the Stalkers and just wreck them, preventing the blink away, which would obviously allow the Ultralisks to get microed and really just do no damage at all and just kite it all over the map. But until that point, I think is actually in quite a good spot with a good fungal growth there. If he starts chain fungling everything, he could be good. He's going for the engagement. Adrenal glands is, of course, done. Those ultralists absolutely wrecking everything. A couple of blinks go down. The fungal growth needs to be more precise. The two colossi are going to fall. And, well, the damage is big on both sides. It's tough to call this. The ultralists have lost their kind of critical mass numbers. A blink forward, but there's no energy on the infestors for a fungal growth. There's one fungal growth there, but I don't know if Targo is going to use it yet. A warp in is going to be very, very difficult to deal with. More ultras, more infestors, and a lot more zerglings on their way down. Even some photon cannons being built here by Baby Knight. This center ground is being so desperately fought over by both players. Now, the other thing about these photon cannons is it will really interrupt the ability of those ultras to get through because the AI on ultralisks is sadly a bit disappointing, but this is the important move. Using a load of zerglings for a counterattack, these zerglings could very well do quite a bit of damage, but a warp in there instantaneously does deflect a lot of it. We do have the first Archon down. That means that somewhere I missed a Templar Archives or a Dark Shrine, neither of which I can apparently see, but the action is coming down here. And well, we have just got so much damage being done by both players. If we look up the resources lost, it's incredibly even slightly worse for Baby Knight, which is actually in Targa's favour. If we look at the work account, 100 workers for Targa right now. He's in the three digits. He's finally building his Spire at 21 minutes. I would have had that way earlier if it was me. The plus three ground armour on the way out for the Zerg, as well as the plus three melee attack. We've got a good fungal growth coming down, but again, those Ultras engaging, getting a bit clumped up on everything. Infestors in, Infested Terrans getting locked down. The Colossus is the back, though, is dealing great damage with the 311 upgrades. The single Overseer coming in just to make sure that all vision is there. Obviously, the Fleet Beacon is finished, but no Mothership on the field yet. More Infested Terrans getting locked down. The Baby and I looks like he's crushed this force at the moment, but the Spine Wall is just relentless, and there is no way at all for him to punch through with such a small force. 
Tugger, remaxing up on Roaches. Now, that is a really neat tech switch, but the only concern I have is that he's got no ranged attack upgrades, which means that those Roaches, while pretty strong in defense, may not be able to deal out the damage in time. Now, a lot of the supply is their infestors, but here we go, Baby Knight feeling lucky, and he is going for all of those spine crawlers. The Roaches coming in from the flank, and this is dealing big damage. The Fungal Growth preventing a lot of this force from getting away. The Ultralisk soaks up a lot of damage. The other one trapped behind the Roaches, unfortunately, but Baby Knight is now in full retreat. Targa is there, nearly at 200 supply, and well, he is just still relentlessly pushing forward, but somehow Baby Knight is managing to hold this off at the moment. He is looking like he's going to lose most of this force, though blinking as best he can to get out of range of everything. Some Zealots warping in, which probably isn't the best units against this composition, just because the Roaches will wreck it. But still, Baby Knight is having to retreat all the way back. And well... So if we take a look quickly around the map, we've got the main base nearly mined out, the natural pretty low, the rest of the base is fine. However, for Baby Knight, his main base is gone, his natural base is pretty much empty, and that means he is on just the two mining bases, trying to take a fifth base now, in a bit of a risky position. I'm surprised he didn't go there. Yes, there was a Zergling hidden, but, well, for the moment we've got the two changelings going across the map, just trying to get an idea of what is happening, and, well, we should see this go really far in Targa's favour now because he's getting up his 6th base he's got everything he wants, all he needs to do is spot this base and he'll be fine and those roaches should be able to see it a single zealot there but of course the cancel will inevitably be forced, those roaches will be able to deal enough damage in a very short period of time to pick that off, the 1 plus 1 ranged upgrades coming down but Targa not going to commit to trying to take out that base, we do see Baby Knight running back though because roaches simultaneously coming into the natural, this is a great multi flung attack and as you can see Baby Knight not quite sure where he should go, sacrificing these Roaches wouldn't be a bad idea. Tiger's got an awful lot of money in the bank, so can really afford to lose stuff. Especially Roaches, they're very supply inefficient, and of course he was maxed out. The Greatest Fire just flicking into action. The Immortal getting focused down. Mirror World, another push coming back in as all of Baby Knight's army falls back. Tiger with the supply lead for quite a while now. He is just trying to micro those Roaches. A great burrow goes down, and no detection either means they will slowly heal up. The Roaches coming at the fifth base of Baby Knight, though, are getting cleaned out at the moment. Look at how well defended all of Tiger's bases are, and this is something that so many Zerg players forget to do. Meanwhile, we've got a lot of Broodlords morphing at the back. Very, very safe back there behind all the spine walls and everything. So that means that they will essentially allow a very defensive position. Now, Baby Knight doesn't have his mother's ship out yet. He's getting more Archons. Obviously, this fifth base has been able to get dropped down, but it's only got about a third of its health points remaining. Targa has taken his sixth base, so it is still a base up on his opponent. And I mean, the only plus side to taking this base for Baby Knight is everything he mines from here really means that he can fall back to the more defensive 5th, 6th uh, base rather, should he need to. Now quite a few of these spine crawlers are moving just to prevent that Zella killing apparently everything. 77 workers apiece, which again, at this stage in the game, you can really start considering losing some of your workers for the army supply. Both players are starting to re-max though quite effectively. We do still have those roaches burrowed up in the main base, but they are getting cleaned out now as there is detection uh, somewhere. But it's a good question where. Anyway, as we take it down here, upgrades are three weapons, two armor, one shield, compared to no air upgrades. I believe we're on 3-3 three, three melee and the plus two missile attack just on its way down. Now, Baby Knight finally building his mothership. I think that's the part which is going to really make Target struggle because he's going to have no way... Well, he does have a way to deal with it, but I mean... Obviously, Vortex on the Broodlords can be very, very tough indeed. Targa's spending his money well at the moment. He's getting out of that big sort of bang he was developing. He has, of course, got his second Spire on the way, getting a plus one Flyer attack. And, well, we've got more Roaches coming in for another push. Targa definitely being the more aggressive at the moment, trying to pick up that forge yet again but not able to do so. The Colossus adding just enough fire support to be able to stop that now. We do have a couple more roaches getting picked off here. Meanwhile, Baby Knight trying to take his sixth base. That will put him on equal bases, putting him in a good spot. The Broodlord count at 15. Only 15 stalkers on the field, though. The Archons could be a threat once the Mothership comes out for the ye olde Archon Toilet, which is where you chuck down a Vortex, you throw all the Archons in there, and as soon as everything pops out, the splash damage the Archons deal melts every single one of the Broodlords. Which is sad times, because Broodlords... They just, they just want to float there. They don't even do the attacking. It's the broodlings. They're the nasty things. Anyway, two roaches apparently dying to cannons indefinitely. 
that is a bit of a shame, but a good plan. Again, you want to get rid of the roaches in late game because they are very, very supply inefficient. They take a lot of your 200 available supply and don't really have much bang for their buck. In the early game, they're fantastic units, but late game, you want to kind of avoid it. The infest account, uh, well, nine, I think that's a nice number. You see a lot of Zerg players who go a bit too heavy on Infester, which is great, but the trouble is, if the, if your army dies because it's not substantial enough, the Infestors are then kind of like, guys, help, help, fungal growth won't end this alone. Mothership, though, coming in there for Baby Knight, and, well, still more Spore Crawlers going down literally everywhere. A good move getting those Spore Crawlers, it's ready to deal with the Mothership effectively, preventing any kind of... Well, cloaked units wrecking your day. You've got the detection. Also, DTs, obviously, are a threat. Also, the Spore Crawlers just have firepower against the Colossus and also the Mothership, so that is a great move. We've got Charge just finishing up. We've got more gateways being built because why the hell not? Baby Knight needs to be able to resupply quickly. And well, we've got a handful of Zealots being thrown in here. That's just, again, clearing out some supply. Look at how much both these players. Amazingly, only about a thousand resources lost difference between them. We got War Prison down the back there. I'll be interested to see what that's going to do. Baby Knight's still doing a good job of denying the creep moving across halfway the map. The only place that isn't really joined up is here, which of course would obviously give vision of that War Prison. Now, a big warp in of Zealots coming in here, but there is just so many Spine Crawlers. But of course, these are 3 2 2 Zealots, which means they are going to be very strong indeed. And it looks like they're just going to try and focus down the hatchery, and they could do a damn good job of that. I don't know if the Spine Crawlers will be able to kill everything in time. It looks like they may just, but if this were to happen again, then it would be bad, bad times. And no, the hatchery does just fall. The one hero, Zealot, does manage to clean everything up. All the Broodlords pulled back, though. That could have been a mistake if Baby Knight decided to punch in the front at the same time. Now, here comes another warp in of a lot of, well, two Archons morphing in, as well as an awful lot of Zealots. But the Broodlords and the Corruptors have spotted them. There's a huge number of Corruptors. That is a grand total of... 20 Corruptors and 15 Broodlords, that is a strong air force right there that obviously Baby Knight needs to find a way to deal with that because at the moment he's only got those 15 Stalkers and 7 Archons which isn't too bad but he needs to think about getting quite a few more Stalkers out. We do have a handful of sentries moving across the map now. Not quite sure where these guys are off to. They could have a bit of a tough time but there's actually surprisingly nothing down here right now. And Wow, there's absolutely no defense in the main base. And the Great Aspire, well, there's a can full of spine crawlers, but I don't know if there's enough, to be honest. Now, obviously, these sentries aren't doing much. They are giving time for that burrow to go down. And, well, the sentries alone will probably get taken out fairly quickly. The spine crawlers will defend the, well, Great Aspire, the Ultra Cavern, the secondary spire. And it should all be fine. Baby Knight going to lose a lot there. Targa using a great bit of, well, supply tricking there to get 209 of 200. The Great Aspire does luckily survive. Meanwhile, this is just a huge force. This is ridiculous. There's now 20 Broodlords, 15 Corruptors, 9 Infestors. Stupid numbers of Spine Crawlers, which unfortunately I cannot count up because there is just too many to be able to work it out. Meanwhile though, Baby Knight, he is sitting there on 25 Stalkers, 11 Archons and that Mothership, as well as 3 Colossi and the 1 Zealot. The 1 Zealot on 1 Sentry because I nearly swore there, but I'm not going to because this is an all-inclusive channel because of a lot of force fields late game isn't too good. Now, Targa here being like Zerg Imba, which is a bit of is a bit of counter BM, I guess. Just like, I'm only still in this because Zerg OP. Or perhaps he's being sarcastic, we will never know. The plus three flyer attack, plus two flyer armor on the way. These Broodlords are going to do so much damage. Things aren't looking great for Baby Knight, if I'm honest. He's getting the plus three shields. And, well, this is, well, a bit of a stalemate situation. And I actually agree with Baby Knight here, is that there's no way for him to harass, and it is one of the limitations of late game ZVP, is that neither of these players want to engage, because there's both players have half the map, and they've both got 200 to 200, and if someone goes to attack, they're going to lose, because the defensive advantage will be too big. And that basically means that these players are just set, kind of, splitting up their units. Now, the way I would deal with this is I probably, Baby Knight saying there's no way for him to doing it, um, is that, to be honest, I try and get 
perhaps lose a bit of supply, lose that zealot, lose that sentry for a start, maybe lose a couple of stalkers, send the war prism in here, try and, there is a spot he could go in, he could pick off the key tech, then really just bank up a lot of money, and I mean, Baby Knight has got a huge amount of money, he's also got a huge number of warp gates, which means that he can resupply very quickly indeed. Perhaps an even better way for Baby Knight to deal with this is to lose some of his work account. Now, obviously, I, I don't agree too much with the kind of BM about the game engine because obviously 75 workers is not needed when you've got 9,000 minerals and 4,000 gas. So what might be better is basically losing about, well, even going down as low as about 40 workers because let's face it, you've only got two mining bases so that would be fine. That would allow you to therefore get an extra 35 supply of army which you could be harassing with and could actually turn in the sides to your favour because imagine if that number was a bit different. That would definitely put Baby Knight in the lead. Now, because both these players are doing very little, I am going to speed things up. Now, a couple of changelings just running in. I'm surprised the target not really trying to harass the main base. That is definitely an option for him. Both of these players are apparently doing very little, and this is almost getting comical now. So I'm just going to keep everything um, on 8 times speed. And just kind of look in the middle, so like... Expert doesn't stop. And now, here we go. Here we go. We have got those probes sacrificing themselves. Good idea. That is a very good idea, Baby Knight. Well done. Have some probes. Yes, definitely have some probes. This map is going to mine out. It is like a TVT from the beta. We've got 30 more spine crawlers being built. Both these players now realizing workers not needed. Baby Knight should theoretically win. And, um, well, to be honest, he could do with just building a lot of gateways. If he did that and then morph them into warp gates, he could hypothetically just lose all of his probes, just mine out the map, get rid of all of your probes, send all of this massive death ball force in, and then just instantly resupply with mass stalker or even like mass archon, who knows, just spam something and just cover the map. Now, I am speeding this game up again because it looks like both of them are getting into a bit of a stalemate right now. This is just ridiculous. Can anyone see just how many spine crawlers there are now? This is crazy. Why are you building so many spine crawlers? <laughs> Target there being like, why can't I build spine crawlers at the ramp? There's so much space I'm not building spine crawlers on. <laughs> Just like, this is absolutely crazy. I would not even want to estimate how many spine crawlers there are. <laughs> Just like, how many do you have enough? I, I don't have enough spine crawlers. We've got more probes dying just instantly. This is good. And, well... This is all going slowly. Now, Baby Knight's surprisingly not building mass cannons because that would be hilarious. And if we look at the working hours, that's 16 to 23. So both these players still nearly maxed out. And <laughs> both of them are just like, are you ever going to attack me? Are you going to attack me? No. No, I'm, I'm not going to attack. You're going to attack? No. And this is this is really kind of a bit of a dead stalemate situation. The queens, the queens are spreading the creep. This is crazy. I'm still on 8 times speed. Oh, we nearly had a bit of an engagement there. What else is going on? Oh, oh, is Baby Knight going to go? Is he going to go? Is he? Is he? Is he going to clear out creep? Okay, okay, we're going this on fast time speed. This is going to be one hell of an engagement when it goes down. Like, it will be absolutely epic when it happens. But when will it happen? I, I don't know if my computer will even cope with it. Like, I can see it, like, starting to lag even on faster now. Because it's got, like... But I've got an amazing computer as well. It's just, like... I've got cloaked units, I've got like broodlords, I've got everything, I've got like so much happening, I can't cope with this. The map is now mined out, I do believe, there's literally just these ba two bases still mining. The, bro the Oh my god, the spine crawlers! We are seeing here the legendary mass spine crawler push, just slowly easing forward. Oh baby knight, baby knight, you're gonna go and clean that, watch out, you're gonna get hit by a spine crawler, you can't afford to do that. Not in this late game situation. Hypothetically though, Baby Knight should really win. I mean, he's got 16, nearly 17,000 minerals and 8,000 gas. Ah, look at that. The Infestor's getting a sneaky fungal growth off there. Some transfuses going down on the Spine Crawlers, making them live forever. The Immortal Spine Crawlers are definitely there. Meanwhile, let's speed things up a little bit. This could be a very, very slow attack at the moment. And still nothing. Oh, we've got the Broodlords. The Broodlords are shelling the base. Just a handful of them. But the Broodlords... If Baby Knight's army comes over, could he open himself up to getting pinned back? These Broodlords devastating a base which is mining nothing. But still the Nexus will fall and this... Oh, oh, the Stalkers, the Stalkers are coming over. Run away, Broodlords, run away, run away. One Broodlord dies, two Broodlords dies, oh dear. Don't lose Broodlords. Four replacing the two though, they're like trees for Greenpeace. They just sit there and plant two for everyone that dies. More Broodlords are coming out now. This force 
absolutely legendary at the moment. And at some point, we will have to have an engagement. I do. Oh, oh, are we going to have one there? No. We've got mass changelings coming in. And this game is getting so long now. Will we ever see an engagement? Oh, what's this? We've got, no, just changelings. Still nothing happening. I've got to go somewhere. I'm watching the mini-map massively just to see this. Trying not to lag my computer out. We're nearly there, guys. These spine crawlers, they are slowly moving forward. Unfortunately, nothing else can move between the spine crawlers. We've got a new parasite going down. Unfortunately, that did very little. If if Target could new parasite that mothership, I think it would probably all be over. We've still just got very little happening. This is why massive long games. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We've got so much. My entire computer is dying. A vortex goes down. The broodlords are coming forward. So much getting sucked into that vortex. A second vortex goes down. We've got corruptors coming from every angle trying to pick off that mothership. Is there enough damage though at the moment? It doesn't seem so baby night. We've got loads more corruptors being built though for Targa at the moment. The vortexes are going to end. The archons are not in there yet. Of course, we've got the broodlords going forward. A massive blink forward goes on. Hiding the health bars just so we can try and see something. And well, the fungal growths are going off. The Broodlords are engaging so well. Baby Knight down to half the supply of his opponent, pretty much. Mass Broodlings everywhere. The Storks are in full retreat. We have got a mass resupply from Targa of loads of Zerglings. But we have also got a mass resupply from Baby Knight of just an infinite number of Stalkers. Just like constantly coming. He has just got so many Warp Gates. Another great blink underneath comes down. Those Broodlords are trying to get picked off. We've got Transfuses going off absolutely everywhere. This is mad at the moment. Targa though, he has got way, way many Broodlords. That isn't even a word, but I don't care right now. There is just so much action going on. This is this last minute fight, which we all pray and hope to see. And Targa, with the supply advantage, Baby Knight down to just 50 supply, but remaxing again on Stalkers. A grand total of 27, I think, built at a time. 27 gateways is pretty mad. There is, of course, the two cannons there. But for the moment, another base being taken out by Targa. We do have just a handful of Zerglings, seeing where that resupply is, but there's so many Corruptors in here at the moment. There's only 8 Broodlords, 27 Corruptors. Targa really needs to think about perhaps making a few more Broodlords. That would be quite prudent, I reckon, especially given the fact that there is n no Colossus on the field, which means that those Corruptors can do nothing against them. Of course, the first Colossus has just popped. We've got an Archon morphing now as well. Meanwhile, though, the main base of Baby Knight is looking to take a load of damage, but for the moment is fine, though. The Corruptors, if they go over, though, though, those two Colossus are going to die so fast. A couple of probes getting sacrificed. Do either player have probes? No, they do. They do both have workers. You don't need workers at this stage. There's nothing to mine, guys. But anyway, we do still have... More spine crawlers. The spine crawlers are slowly moving forward. We've got the corruptors killing the colossus, and for the moment, Targa is out of money. If Baby Knight plays this well, he could still win. Did the Zerg player wait too long to go for engagement? I don't know at the moment, but this is just so many stalkers and archons perfectly ready to deal with that air superiority the target has at the moment. And of course, 25 corruptors are completely useless, but there's no money to do anything else with them. And so Baby Knight is in such a strong position now. Could Baby Knight come back to win this? We have got the mass, mass spine crawler wall moving forward. And here we go, we've got the engagement going on. We've got Broodlords getting picked off, Transfuses going down. Meanwhile, at the front, we've got Corruptors picking off the only Colossus left. The Spine Crawlers are acting as a great wall here. The Broodlords, though, are taking damage. The Broodlords are dying. There's only five, four Broodlords remaining. And three... Oh, dear, this is not looking good for Targa. He does have quite a few Zerglings. The Spine Crawlers are doing great damage, but so many unburrowed. The drones, they're trying to get in on it. Baby Knight, though, still able to produce units due to having money in the bank. And admittedly, though, his money is getting pretty damn low. We do have more Zerg Zealots coming over, trying just to soak up some damage. I'm not sure if that was a good spend of the money. And that could actually cost Baby Knight the game at the moment. But on the plus side, there's only two Broodlords, 12 Zerglings, and two Infestors. The 24 Corrupt is completely useless at the moment. So what is Baby Knight going to do? He's making a mothership. I don't think that's the best move, though, because obviously... That will just allow those Corruptors to do something. Now, we're yet another stalemate situation. And this game is just pretty crazy. Baby Knight needs to be so careful with how he pokes and prods in here. Those spine crawlers, this could very well end up in a stalemate situation. Um, especially if only Corruptors are left. All. Let me just slow this down for a second to go through what I foresee as being a possible solution. Now, there's no more minerals on the map, correct? 
Now, or gas, which means both players are broke. Like, really broke. If the two Broodlords, the eight Zerglings, the 13 drones, and the Roach and Infestor, basically all the units that can... Everything, if everything is killed, except for those Corruptors, and all of Baby Knight's units are killed, then it will be a draw because there's no way, as far as I can see, Baby Knight could pick off all of these units because there are a couple of spore crawlers dotted around, which could be the real problem. Now, some good blink tech going on. The Broodlord's trying to move forward. That is a risky strategy because they are very, very valuable to you at the moment. Oh my god, this is getting tense. A good fungal growth goes down, doesn't do quite enough damage though. And well, the spine crawlers are slowly moving forward ever so slowly the stalkers not taking much damage Taka, you broke now <laughs> just like i'm broke are you broke i don't know maybe <laughs> just like maybe i may be broke this could be over meanwhile we've got this ah the spore crawlers you can't lose the spore crawlers they are essential once that mothership's out you need the detection that is just so critical this is all getting very very tense now it's no good killing everything else baby knight because you've still got to deal with this the mass of spine and spore crawlers. Are we going to see it go? There's too many spore crawlers over there. That's the problem. There's a lot of spore crawlers. Too much damage will be done. Obviously, the corruptors could focus down that mothership so easily. If they did manage to pick it off, it would be huge. That could almost be game winning. This is getting so tense right now. Where are those corruptors? Come on. Come on. We should see some corruptors. I keep speeding this up, by the way, guys. Here we go. We've got Fungal Growth to recall. That was a bold move. That was good. Lol. I do agree. That was very funny. This is... Have you noticed I put my serious voice on now? This is serious. The Corruptors... Are the Corruptors going to go for the... No, 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 no. They're not going to go for it. Not quite yet. Are they? The Corruptors just saying they're dying. That is not a good use of Corruptors. I know you've got too many of them. But don't just sacrifice them to the Protoss. You can't afford to do that. Meanwhile, those Stalkers yet again coming in. You can't lose those Corruptors. You need them so badly. Spore Crawl is getting picked off. Are there any Broodlords? There are... There's one Broodlord, one Infester, and three Zerglings. And a stupid amount of spine crawlers speeding this up again. Are we going to see any? This is this is tense, guys. Guys, this is tense. Guys, it could go either way. This is a four times speed, by the way. Just neither player is doing anything. It's like, no, no, no. This isn't going well. Someone do something. The brood lords. The brood lords, should I say? Oh, that was so close. Is there even any queens? Is there even a queen? No. Not even a queen for the transfuse. That broodlord, the miracle broodlord, is so low. The, the mothership, the massive force. Oh my god, the vortex. The vortex with the archon in it. The vortex with the archon. Does that mean all the corruptors are going to die? We'll wait and see. No, they managed to get away. Oh, this is, this is so damn tense. Seriously, guys. This is so damn tense. So damn tense. Sense. What is going to happen? There's lots of corruptions going down on stalkers, but then the corruptors remembering, hey, we can't shoot down. This is this is close. Oh my god, this, the corruptors. Baby Knight just slowly picking stuff off. Oh my god. <laughs> Suicider building. <laughs> just all of those spine crawlers moving forward. We've got the engagement going on now. Lots of stalkers are getting picked off. So many spine crawlers though. These Corruptors moving straight forward towards that mothership. There are some Photon Cannons there, though. So you don't want that kind of engagement. And, well, this is just getting pretty bold. The Corruptors, you've got to take more care of your Corruptors. How many is he down to? He's only got the 13 of them now. Against 17 Stalkers. This is pretty crazy. We'll speed this up a bit more. The Spine Crawlers are still moving up. The Spine Crawlers are still moving. Corruption going down on the Stalkers, just allowing more damage to be done. The Spore Crawlers are getting hit, though. You need to be careful of those Spore Crawlers. They are always in bad times. You've got to be careful. More Spines moving forward. This Spine Wall apparently inevitably big. We do have now some buildings getting taken out by Spine Crawlers. Good blink back. This is pretty crazy. And Baby and I like, well, I guess Spines are good then. Herb Derb, and it would seem that way. The, the Spine Crawlers could inevitably destroy everything. We'll wait and see if they can, whether that is even possible. Obviously, they don't regenerate health. This is pretty close. The Mothership! The Mothership! Oh, the Mothership's on its own! The Corruptors! The Corruptors aren't quite close enough yet. This is all very bold. How many? Oh my god, this is like... Seriously, this is like playing chicken with a train or something. Except both players are both chickens and trains. So they're kind of like strange feathered trains or something. But nonetheless, this push still continues. 
We are an hour and 15 minutes into this game. The supplies are 26 to 42. And well, we've got... Oh my god, the spine crawlers. The spine crawlers are advancing forward, but the stalkers are coming in from behind. The mothership is on its own. There is still the 17 stalkers on the field. It doesn't seem like it. That is not 17. Where are the rest? I don't quite know. Spine crawlers, though, are in the main base. They are attacking everything. We've got more. We've got more. Oh my god, the mothership! The mothership is taking huge damage. The vortex does go down. Is the mothership going to fall? The mothership goes! <gasps> that was scary times. Scary times now. No mothership. That can be difficult. The corruptors are now completely useless. There's nothing that they can do. And slowly, slowly the Protoss army dies. Those, those few stalkers are taking big damage now, blinking like mad, blinking everywhere. Spine call is moving everywhere. The stalkers don't know where to go. Is there even enough stalkers right now? They're down to 16. One has been killed. The number of stalkers is the important thing to watch now. I have got this on 8 times speed because, my God, this game has gone on for quite a while. But still the stalkers. The stalkers are moving forward. 16 stalkers. They're all getting very low on health. The shields are the only thing keeping them alive. Shields OP. This is definitely the game of the century, Targum. I do agree. We're at 1 hour 20 now. The spine crawler numbers are slowly decreasing. This... How many... Wait, let's pause this. How many spines are there? Wait, wait for it. Are there any more... No. It is just four spines against an awful lot of stalkers. And there goes Baby Knight. Just like, lol, I have got so many more. I found a bunch of stalkers. <laughs> just the pure happiness for Baby Knight there. Just being like... Oh my god, I found so many stalkers! <laughs> just like you can imagine his relief, just be like, I can win this now. I can I can win this quite confidently. Just like, come at me bro. I'm just chipping away, just doing the damage here and there. The corrupt is still being used to like corrupt. This game will probably be over soon. Baby Knight has got it. The poor corrupt is indeed no purpose in life. They're just sitting there on the sofa, watching terrible daytime TV. Do Corruptors even have eyes? I'm not sure. It's a good question. I, I don't see any eyes there, do you? I don't. Look on that little picture on the bottom right. No, I don't see an eye. But the dancing spore crawlers, they are going. The spore crawlers cannot attack the stalkers though. And there is the GG at long last. So that was an hour and 26 minutes, guys. I hope you did enjoy what was a bit of a funky, epic long macro game. And for now, I say goodbye. If you did enjoy, please subscribe. I get new top level games up every day of the week. Follow me on Twitter, leave a cool comment, like the video, and I will see everyone tomorrow for another StarCraft 2 England cast. I was Maddles, thank you very much for watching, goodbye for now.